So a couple of weeks ago, we took a look at the AMD Athlon 300GE. It did put up a fight in some current esports titles, but it definitely had a little more to give. Now the planets have aligned and the perfect opportunity has come up to overclock the pants off it. So stick around as that's exactly what we're going to do. And I hope you enjoy the video. My name's Andy and this is Andy's Tech and introducing the perfect opportunity. Now this is a custom PC I've built and sold to a customer featuring a very nice fractal design pop mini case, a Radeon Sapphire RX 580 8GB, a Ryzen 4500 processor sitting on a B450 motherboard with 16GB of 3200MHz CL16 RAM. There's a 500GB M.2 SSD and all powered by a Seasonic 850W 80 plus bronze PSU. But I think we should have a little fun before it goes, don't you think? We are though going to have to remove a few components as we just want to use the little 2 core 4 thread 300GE and its integrated Vega 3 graphics. Although it would be fun to see what that could put out when paired with an RX 580, but maybe another day. So the GPU will have to go now unfortunately. And the 500GB M.2 as well as we have a 500GB SSD we used from the last video with all the games and the drivers installed. And if you didn't catch that, I will leave a link above now. Next, we can remove the stock AMD cooler by simply undoing the four mounting screws and it lifts away. Then we can swap out the processor and store it safely on one side until it needs refitting. It's a great budget chip, the Ryzen 4500 and it's worthy of its own video in the future. The 300GE then fits snugly into place and with a quick dab of thermal paste we can refit the cooler again, making sure to tighten it down correctly, working opposite corners at a time. This cooler is total overkill for the 300G, but as I don't have the Athlon stock cooler, it will have to do. It also adds to the aesthetic of the build as well. Next is just a case of plugging the SSD power and SATA cables in, refitting the sides of the case, and we're good to go. Now I don't know about you, but that's a pretty cool looking 300GE build, and total overkill. But if you can, why not right? Now overclocking the little 300GE was super simple to do in the B450 BIOS. I just increased the CPU multiplier to 38, giving us 3.8 GHz up from the stock 3.4. And navigating to the graphics menu next, I increased the GPU core to 1600 MHz from the stock 1100. And I also set the voltage to 1.3 volts. Sorry about the stills guys, but my Elgato capture card just doesn't work out of Windows, so this will have to do. Then, all that was left was to make sure the RAM was running at its 3200MHz CL16 XMP profile. Then F10 save and reset. I've retested the same games today from the previous video, which were all run at 900p, apart from Valorant that was tested at native 1080p. I was however so impressed with the results though, that I went back and tested everything again at 1080p. So enjoy the game footage montage and we'll talk results afterwards.
So with the benchmark results in, and I'm honestly quite amazed by the improvement in performance that we gained over testing the stock little HP in the previous video. If we pull up the results now and looking at the averages first, all the games tested saw a major improvement over stock and even with better averages at 1080p. Valorant, Fortnite and Rocket League gained around 30 FPS, which was up to about a third more performance for two of the titles. Dota 2 saw a 21 FPS improvement at 900p and a 19 FPS improvement at 1080p. GTA 5 gained 14 frames and about 25% performance over stock 900p and at 1080p the graphics couldn't keep up bringing back 87 FPS on both instances. If we move to the 1% lows now and we were all above the 30 FPS limit that I like to see. We don't really want dips below that whatever kind, whatever system you're using. Fortnite scraped through here but it is Fortnite and at 900p we did see some of the benefits of that overclock. Valorant saw the most improvement in the percentiles going from 50 to 75 FPS and that's pretty amazing just for changing a few settings in the BIOS. Rocket League did suffer a little here but it still wasn't anything to complain about. Finally, if we pull up the 0.1% lows as well, we can see that we're hovering around the high 20s, mid 30s across the board with most of the games, and just creeping above the 30 FPS mark with the overclock. For just two cores and four threads we have, again, that's a pretty solid result. Apart from Fortnite that is. Yeah, enough said. So that brings us to the end of the video. I'm actually quite amazed with this little chip now. I was impressed before we tested it at stock. Yes, all things taken into perspective. It is a budget 2 core 4 thread APU, but it honestly puts up a good fight even in 2022. That's four years after its release. And yes, you should buy a used 3200G or 3400G instead if you are going down this route but you can certainly play some light esports titles casually at 1080p with no trouble whatsoever. The game ran smooth as well, even with just the two cores. So AMD, where's the new Athlon? Thank you for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at the little Athlon 300GE. Please leave a comment down below. I'd love to know what you guys think. Please leave a like as well. It helps the channel out massively. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Take care, God bless and hopefully see you in the next one.